Hey, what's happening YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I had an awesome day and I will continue. Actually, it's evening now, so my day is over, but I'm having a great evening. Uh, but I have a couple shout outs and then uh, I do have some helpful topics. And um, one of the topics in particular I owe to a subscriber. But a uh, new subscriber, Alan248, thank you so much for joining us. I do appreciate it. New subscriber, Casey Balfour. And then this person subscribed a while ago, but she's the one who kind of helped give me an idea of a topic that I'm also going to add to it on top of it. And I'm going to show you what to do. That person's name is Carrie Bun. Kombe. Carrie, if I mispronounce your last name, I am terribly sorry. People who have been following me for a while know my pronunciation is just crap. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So, anyway, the topics I've got for you today are, one, are how to make uh, a hills, plateaus, you know, uh, a bumpy in environment when you're doing a tank so you don't just have soil or you know aquatic soil just going straight across your tank you want it to look like it has some hills and valleys and what and and things of that nature going on in there which is understandable so I'm going to show you very simple tricks to do that I'm also going to show you how to do a background for your tank without going out to an aquarium store and buying their silly plastic sticker backgrounds with painted on leaves and plants and all of that. I'm all about doing things naturally and making them look real, like nature. So, what should we talk about first? Alright, I'll tell you what we'll talk about first. First, we will talk about how to do a background for your tank. Very cheap and easy. So, right here what I've got. This is a roll of window tent that I got at Walmart. Wasn't very expensive, it was a few bucks. I think I got about 10 feet of it, which was way more than I needed. Um, you can buy all different types of window tent. This particular kind that I got, you can, it's darker on one side than the other, and it is a, this type of tent is a tent where, um, like you and the fish can see out and through the tank, but light can't get in. Now, if you want to completely blacken it out, get window tint that's called limousine black. Now, that is completely black, so it'll make the back of your tank completely black. It, you and the fish can't see out the rear. Light can't come in from the rear. And this is also beneficial, um, like let's say you want a tank, but you want, a, you want it near a window in your house, and you know not to do that because you've been told when you put a fish tank near a window sunlight coming in causes rapid algae growth all right well if you put tent on there you don't have to worry about that and you can have your nice long beautiful tank sitting right there in front of the window and don't have to worry about any of that extra sunlight getting in there and causing nuisance algae from growing so I will tell you this there are uh, some youtubers that will say oh just use some spray paint and spray the you know back of your tank black well I, I don't like that for several reasons for one if you're not a painter and you don't know what you're doing and you don't seal the tank up properly and you just start spray painting everything well there's a potential uh, what we call off spray to land inside your tank well shocker paint is toxic to fish so if you haven't done your due diligence and didn't seal the tank up properly and you get a, you know some off spray of black paint inside your tank, you, you've now just made it completely toxic. Even if you wash it off, because you can't wash tanks with, soap, um, with soapy water either. Uh, although you can't see it, glass does have microscopic holes and it will absorb soap. If you're going to clean glass, you need to use vinegar, salt, and water. That, that's it. And also, with spray paint, even if you did do your due diligence, if you don't want it flaking off over time and getting little holes in it, you also then got to do a clear coat over it to make sure it stays. Now, all of that is a lot of extra work, and it costs more money. Window tent is cheap. You don't need to do anything. 
you take it, put it along the length of your tank, you know, like so, if you can even see, get a ruler, mark where you need to cut it, and it's very simple to put it on. Just get a spray bottle with some water, wet the glass, slide it over the glass once you've measured it, and you, you have it, put it on the back of your tank, and you can use something simple like, you know, for a squeegee, like, you know, a credit card or something to get all the air bubbles out, and boom, you've blackened it out. And now, but you want it to look pretty in the rear, not just black. Well, put taller plants in the back, and the only thing you'll see are the plants. The black window tent will, will blacken out everything else, and all you'll see are the plants. You don't need light coming in from the rear of your tank. And some people don't like to look through their tank. And, uh, excuse me. Yeah, if you're wondering, yeah, that was a burp that was about to happen. I, I swallowed it. Um, yeah, I'm regretting that now. Anyway, um, some people don't want to see straight through their tank, you know, and, and see part of the wall and all of that. They think it doesn't look good, which I can understand. Window tent, baby. Do it. It's not harmful to anything. Easy to deal with and it sticks to your glass using water and you can take it off whenever you want. You spray paint your tank, you put clear coat on it, and then one day you decide you want to move your tank somewhere and you don't want it on there anymore, guess what you got to go do now? Go buy some paint thinners, get yourself some razor blades, empty everything out of the tank and start scraping all that crap off. Window tent. Thinking with my noggin. Um, you could cover two 55-gallon tanks easily with this in the rear. And the only thing that will be decorating the back are the plants that you put in, in the rear. So, now that we got that out of the way, I'm not going to demonstrate putting it on there. I mean, it speaks for itself. And if you really need instructions on how to squeegee out air pockets, it will come with those instructions. Just like when you're going to a uh, Walmart, if you look above those automatic doors, there are actual instructions on how to approach an automatic door. You think it speaks for itself. Walk towards the door and it opens. Nope. They've got a three three paragraph ordeal explaining exactly how to approach it. Why? I don't know. They think you're going to die somehow? I have no idea. So, let's get to the second subject. The second subject. Carrie, I will give you credit for this. Uh, this was a topic that I had thought about once before, but I never, I never made a video about it. But you asked me how to do it in a conversation we were having on a video, and I'm going to uh, demonstrate for everyone how to do that now. Now, this is just a three-gallon tank. This is my experimental tank where I do, you know, I use it for examples and to show people how to do stuff. So, and by the way, I do dirted tanks you know, capped with blasting sand. That does not mean you have to do it my way. There, are, You can use fluval stratum. You can use uh, uh, imaginarium uh, aquion soil. You can, uh, you know, use eco-complete fluoride. All that expensive stuff, I've used them before. I've spent 120 bucks on fluval stratum uh, to fill a large tank with soil, and it worked great. Here's my problem with those types of soil. One is they are water soluble they're constantly leaching nutrients into the water column which is great for like floaters and rhizome plants but it depletes their nutrients <coughs> excuse me on top of that they have a they have a shelf life in your tank if you put a bunch of heavy root feeders in there like uh, valisanaria um, amazon swords being the worst and uh, cryptocorns they will deplete all the nutrients in those types of soils in as soon as six months or less than a year. You spent all that money on this expensive soil that does work great, but in less than a year you got to rescape everything, or you can retort to buying a bunch of root tabs and continually putting root tabs in there every couple months. Ergo, you never stop spending money on these expensive soils. I can tell you right now that and I will show you examples if my way is so wrong. Um, I use dirt capped with blasting sand in every tank, and there's a reason. Nature does not put fluorite 
across the globe for plants, nor does it eco complete or fluval stratum, which is made out of volcanic ash. It uses dirt. Dirt is the best thing for plants, and that's what they love. That's what they thrive off of. So give them what they would have in nature. All right, so, but regardless of what kind of substrate you use, this technique will work with any of them. So you put, before you put your substrate in, and you want to make a little hill somewhere, get yourself some mesh bags. You can, they're very cheap. One this size, I think I spent 99 cents on this at uh, PetSmart. But they come in all different sizes. And I've got, I always keep uh, multiple of them for different reasons. Some of them, uh, I'm not going to explain all of it. But here's one of the uses. So, we're going to open up the bag. Right down here, what I've got is a big old bag of pebbles. I'm going to start putting some pebbles in here. Yeah, pebbles. A whole bunch of pebbles. A whole bunch of pebbles in the bag, all over the floor, and all over my table. Fantastic. All right, now we are going to take this bag of pebbles and put it in the tank first before we do the layer of soil and the blasting sand or whatever kind of substrate you, you want to use and you're insistent on. That's fine. And you can fill as many of these up or get larger ones and make it make your hills you can make several hills across or you can make let's say you just want to make one big one side one giant slope and then it goes down and it's just flat across the rest of the tank you can do that just keep filling them up with pebbles it's a mesh bag the pebbles are harmless the bags are harmless and you would still put the same layer of substrate on top of these bags as you would the rest of the tank that's flat it's not all going to collide and fall off the bags and then, and then dump into the layer that is like a plateau. Um, it, it, it will all stick and hold, it, and hold its shape. Um, so there you go. Now, let me fix a problem for someone who's like, well, I've dirted my tank. I've capped it. Man, it looks great. I filled it with water and everything. Oh, crap. And I wanted a mountain over here in the corner. Now what do I do? So here's what you can do in that case. In that case, you dirted it, you put it all in there, you filled it with water, and now you feel you're doomed and you can't put hills in, the, in there anymore. Incorrect! I've got a solution for you. Uh, Maybe kind of a pain in the butt, but you can do it. Siphon out every drop of water out of your tank. Dig a hole. Stick the bag of rocks in that hole and then put your layer of substrate over that and then again with your blasting sand or whatever soil you use so and then refill it with water and you can do that throughout the tank I hope you found all that stuff helpful if I mentioned if I forgot to mention anything that you are concerned about please drop a comment or just say hi I say hey to everybody I will answer everyone's questions if you dropped in to tell me I hate you and your way sucks, well, thanks for letting me know, bud. I have seven tanks throughout the house. There are four more. I use uh, soil, organic soil, and I cap it with blasting sand in all my tanks, and I have used all other substrates. And uh, one helpful tip, fluorite actually works wonders mixed with organic soil, if you can afford it. Okay, so, hey, what's happening, dude? Hi. Say hi to the YouTubers. Hi. Hey, uh, this is my son. Hi. Uh, he just came in because he wants to be on camera. He, he, he thinks I'm famous when actually nobody knows me except for you 200 people. <laughs> you, you have something you want to say to the YouTubers? Um, please subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please subscribe. Hit that like button. Yeah, smash that like button. I never say that. Anyway, but I'm going to show you a couple of my tanks and let you see how they're doing with dirt and blasting sand and also just so you know all those expensive aquatic soils that deplete their nutrients in six months to a year dirt can and will last indefinitely and that's another topic we'll get into in another day now give me one moment and i'm going to show you a couple of my tanks 
All right. Here we are. Here we're back. Life is flourishing. There are babies. Life is thriving. Plants look fantastic. I mean, I don't know. You tell me if dirt's not working. Here's my jungle scape. Look at how dense and populated this is with Sagittaria and Valisneria. And uh, look, even in my shrimp tank, I use dirt with blasting sand. And there are hundreds right now they're hiding. Most of them, I think, are dangling from the top. But they have been thriving, and everything just does better with with dirt. Hey, how's it going? We're back. But this time I'm not going to tell you anything except I hope you had a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't enjoy the video, I don't know what to tell you. I guess you wasted 15 minutes of your life. Hello. Oh, here's my other son, Alex. Alex, do you want to, we're telling the YouTubers goodbye. Is there something you'd like to say? Bye-bye. Smash that little bill. Smash that bill? Like a hundred dollar bill? The, no, the, the bell. So. The notification bell. Ooh, a notification bell. They yeah, can do so that? They, yeah, mm -hmm. so they can get all so they can see all your videos. So they can see all my videos? Yeah. Man, you're like you guys are blowing my mind right now. They they can um you, they can see all the new videos you upload. Yeah, you post, they can see it as soon as you post it. So hit that little bell. That's crazy. Get the notification hey, this bell is right news now. to me. I was completely oblivious until now. Alright. Thanks for dropping in, guys. Bye bye. I hope you all have a fantastic night, and like always, if you're having a bad day, you're down in the dumps, get up and do something about it. I appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Hey, you guys should say that like 12 more times and maybe it'll happen. Uh, subscribe. Subscribe. No, uh, subscribe. I'm kidding. We're out of here.